Dan Ashworth is on gardening leave and Manchester United have made a formal approach. We'll find out the latest on what is going on with United's new sporting director. Also, there's been updates, another potential move for a Chelsea analyst this time. United just bolstering that backroom staff. Also, there is reports on the latest of the career of Mason Greenwood. What is going on there? We will get into all of that in the news. Hello and welcome to Stretford Paddock. My name is Joe. We are here at Old Trafford and you know what? It's not bad. It's a little bit of the sun coming through the clouds. We're looking at these car parks that one day will potentially be the new Old Trafford and I'm happy to be here. We've got loads coming up today. We're looking at Dan Ash with this evolving story. That's, there seems to be a lot of movement almost every day on this at the moment. We've also got a few updates, a little bit on Marcus Rashford, a little bit on some very strange goings on with the under 21s or should I say over 35s as well. Let's get into it. So our first story today then, this is Dan Ashworth, of course, Newcastle Sporting Director, looking to be Manchester United's new Sporting Director. There's two bits here. The first one is he's been placed on garden leave by Newcastle. For those who don't know, garden leave is basically you're still employed, but you better not come in. And I looked at the sort of history of this word, what it means, because garden leave, what even is that? What, he's not gardening, he's not going, unless he's just sort of pottering around a garden centre with his wife and kids eating a, a sort of 7 99 omelette. I don't really understand how how this makes sense but apparently it's just an old-fashioned phrase that came from the idea of when someone's at home they're just doing a bit of gardening and actually it's a bit of a joke and a play on the fact that they're not in work anymore shy really anyway Dan Ashworth has been placed on gardening leave which basically means he has asked Newcastle to leave they have basically come out and said we're disappointed that Dan wants to leave but we'll find a, a replacement and begin our search for replacement immediately. So they're accepting that he's going. The question is now, how much is he going to go for? What do United have to do? What do United have to pay to get this over the line? There were reports uh, earlier in the week of a £20 million fee that Newcastle were looking for. Then I think the Telegraph said uh, the next day and yesterday that they think somewhere in the region of £15 million would be more likely. It's a lot of money, isn't it? And I was looking at this the other day, that initial 20 million fee, I think would be United's ninth highest all-time sale if that was us selling a football player. That's how much money that is. It doesn't seem a lot in, in football terms, but it's, it, compared to who United sell, it's actually a lot of money, that. And obviously, you don't want to be taking 15, 20 million quid off any potential incomings in the January or summer transfer window, should I say. So it's an interesting one, how United navigate this. I believe he's got a contract till 2026, so we can't... Uh, just, you know, wait, wait this out, really. We have to come up with some sort of agreement unless we want to wait 12 months or 18 months or whatever it may be to get Dan Ashworth in the club. Something has to be done here. And I think I've never seen a standoff where this sort of deal doesn't get sorted. You never see a sporting director sat at home for two years because his parent club won't let him leave. If you think of it as a, someone leaving their job, usually you hand your notice in and you're gone in 30 days. Obviously, this is a different situation to that, but I'm hopeful that Manchester United will be able to get this sorted. Also, following off the back of this, uh, BBC and Simon Stone have said that United have made an official approach for Dan Ashworth. Of course, one thing follows the other. We knew this was coming. We knew it makes sense. But when the BBC are saying it, we know it's happened. So, United are, of course, acting swiftly. And this is the sort of thing that these walls, these, these, these streets haven't seen in such a long time. United just going, like... He said they're going to conduct Ineos a full audit of the club, top to bottom. And I thought, oh, well, based on sort of Glazer timescales, that means somewhere just before 2030, we'll decide that this place needs a new lick of paint. They've already hired a new CEO. They've already brought in John claude Blanc and Dave Brailsford. They've already brought in, um, well, or they're on the way to bringing in Dan Ashworth. We've got names underneath him as well who look like they're going to be coming in very soon. I think we've already brought in a new scouting guy uh, from, from, from another club as well. Like, United are just doing things. They've only been here properly for, what, two months? And already we're seeing they are, they are making the changes that the Glazers haven't made in 18 years. It's very impressive. And as I keep saying, frustrating that we've had to wait this long. But it looks as though Dan Ashworth, Manchester United's new sporting director, is very much waiting in the wings. He's on the way. He will be here soon. Any updates when that final sort of um, you know, contract is drawn up, when he's seen at Old Trafford, when he is talking to the players and the staff and all that, we will bring you that news, of course, here on Stretford Paddock, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Next up then, another potential incoming above the manager, and I'm not talking about Jason Wilcox, who's been rumoured as a potential director of football. I'm talking about Kyle McCauley, who has been a sort of analyst for Chelsea, which makes you think, Jesus Christ, anyone from Chelsea, I do not want. However, he was with Ashworth 
and Graham Potter at Brighton. He went over to Chelsea when Potter went there and made that move. Obviously, that was a, a sort of bizarre move that to me, was never going to work because of the fact that Thomas Tuchel wasn't doing badly enough for him to get sacked in the first place. You win the Champions League and then, what, 18 months later or 14 months later, you six in the league. That's not enough to get sacked. However, we all know what's going on at Chelsea and that doesn't mean that this guy isn't very good. Kyle McCauley, again, I don't know a lot about him. I don't know much about the sort of chief analyst world. What I do know is if Dan Ashworth likes him, if he worked well at Brighton, that seems like the sort of thing that United could learn from. The, the, the analysis of the opposition, how they played, especially during that period where you go there and it felt like you were playing against... I don't know, at times United have really struggled against Brighton, haven't they? We know that. Um, and you would think that he can bring a level of expertise and a level of analysis that maybe United currently don't have. And again, you almost want... you don't, I, What I don't want, on one hand, is it just to be the sort of Dan Ashworth show. Everyone from Brighton come to Man United because Brighton finished 17th. You know what I mean? It's not as though Brighton are the best team in, in England. However, when you talk about punching above their weight, when you talk about what they've spent versus what they've achieved, Brighton are a very, very impressive team and have, have a very impressive portfolio uh, of, of results and players um, and, and, and scalps uh, during the time that Dan Ashworth was there. If we can replicate a little bit of that but on a bigger scale, bigger budget, if United could overachieve with the money we spend, then you know things are really, really going to turn the corner. So this sounds like a, an exciting proposal to me. Kyle, uh, McCauley, let's wait and see. But it sounds like United again. We're, ju we're making moves. That's what we do now. We're a club that makes moves. We used to be one that just sit on our hands and do all. Now we're moving. We're using those hands to shake hands with other people. We're bringing people through the door. It's very, very exciting. Get your thoughts in, in the comments. If you know anything about him, which I'm sure someone must. There's thousands of people watching this. What do you know about Kyle McCauley? Did you go to school with him? Does your dad used to work with him? Does your mum used to work with him? Let me know in the comments. Next up then, this is the latest on Mason Greenwood. Now this is coming from Christopher Michel, who is a German journalist who's worked for Sport Eins and other publications as well. He has said that there is no way back for Mason Greenwood at Manchester United. This has sort of been a long rumoured position uh, thought to be held by Man United. And it always made sense to me that the new owners wouldn't come in and just sort of reignite this such a sort of political and sort of moral hot potato that is the Mason Greenwood situation. It, it, it wouldn't make sense for me for them to go, you know what, he's coming back. Because that, for minimum 50% of Man United fans, is a what are you doing here situation. And I don't think that's the sort of PR they need. Also, let's just have a bit of, you know, a, a higher moral standing to Man United than to say, you know, he spent a year away. That means what he did don't matter anymore. We can't be doing that. And again, this is being backed up here by Christopher Mikel. He says that United are looking at somewhere in the region of 40 million euros for Mason Greenwood. I think Atletico Madrid are interested. Um, they seem to be the biggest name. Uh, Barcelona as well. But when I say biggest name, biggest spending power. Because Barcelona, maybe they're interested. But at the minute, they're looking through their pencil case for a rubber and some pencil shavings to give you as a transfer fee. So I think... Somewhere in the region of 40 million euros. I'd be surprised if we got that much, but as a sort of start off negotiating point, it kind of makes sense to me. He's still obviously a very talented player and he's done okay at Getafe. He's done pretty well. I think United, for a player as young as he is, for a player with the talent he's got, would be right to look somewhere in the region of, I would say, 25 to 35 million quid for him. Let's wait and see. But I think this news that he won't be coming back to Manchester United is one that, for a lot of fans, will be disappointing. But for, I think for the majority of Manchester United fans, or certainly for myself, is one that is the decision that Ineos have to make. There's no real way they can say, one of our first things we're doing in the summer transfer window, bringing back this absolute political hot potato I just don't see it happening so Mason Greenwood looks like he will be leaving in the summer next up then and it's not technically Manchester United but it is of interest to me as a Manchester United fan so maybe you at home as United fans will be interested as well Florian Plettenberg is talking about the potential of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer becoming the Bayern interim coach now when I hear Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and interim coach my loins do do cry out in in a memory <laughs> Now, when I hear Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and interim coach in the same sentence, my heart almost skips a beat. Some of the best times as a Man United fan in the last 10 years was that run culminating in that win against PSG. The most sort of Manchester United of all wins coming from behind, last minute penalty from an academy player. What a fantastic few weeks that was as a Man United fan. 
probably the most enjoyable I've had in the last decade as a Manchester United fan. I would love it if he went to Bayern Munich and did something there. I know it's obviously going to be difficult. I think um, what the Leverkusen have got a six-point lead on Bayern at the moment. But you know what? Six points is two bad weeks. It's not all that. And I think they'd be Bayern Munich could do a lot worse than Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. And he gets this slander that, oh, he's a terrible manager. What are you doing that for? He's, no, no, no. He finished third and second with a team that no one else has done that with before or since, by the way. No one else has had consecutive top four finishes with Manchester United since Sir Alex left. Ten Hag won't do it this season, or he possibly could do it this season, but it's currently six and it's looking iffy. Jose never did it, Van Gaal never did it, Moyes only lasted ten months. No one else has ever done what he did at Man United. He got to countless semi-finals, got to the Europa League final, obviously didn't win those trophies and obviously that is a limit and one of the reasons he's not here today and you know I think it's probably for the best but people talk about him like he's oh he's just like Frank Lampard he's not he's a very good manager who did very good things across multiple different trophies and and, uh, and cups at Manchester United and I think as, as far as interim goes he's certainly a better man manager than Thomas Tuchel is he could get those players happy get those players playing and you know no offence to, to Bayer Leverkusen it's all because they've, they've done fantastic things but Bayern Munich have a better squad than Bayer Leverkusen. If he can just get them playing at 70, 80%, they've very much still got a chance of winning the Bundesliga. And I think, oh, I'd love it. It's fine. It'd be nice to actually have a team to support in Germany. If Ole goes there, I want Bayern to win 100%. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And finally, here's a little stat for you. Tom Huddleston, who is the player coach of Manchester United under-21s, you may know him from his Tottenham days, from his Hull days as well, I believe. Um, he played and scored the winner for the under-21s a couple of days ago against Manchester City. He made his professional footballing debut in 2003, making him, well, making his career older than anyone else on the pitch that day. He started playing professionally before any of them lot were born. Now, if that doesn't smack you as a, an obvious under-21s player, I don't know what does. I don't know what the rules are at under-21s, but he's literally double the age of most of those lot. I don't know what's going on. All I know is, if United can beat City at any level, I'm happy about it. So thank you, Tom Huddleston. And may uh, this continue many more goals scored. I, I, want, I want it to be a point where this goal he scored this week happened before any of the next lot were born. I want him to be still here in another 22 years, banging in winners at the age of 55 or whatever it'll be. That's my dream for Tom Huddleston. Let's just make an absolute mockery of the under-21 rules. Right, that's going to be all from me. Thank you very much for joining. Get your thoughts in on all of these stories in the comments below. This has been the news from Old Trafford. We'll see you in a bit.